right, good morning everyone. Hope you are having a good week so far. Happy hump day, the last hump day of April 2020. So we're gonna get started in about one minute with our uh, functional fitness workout this morning. Hey Linda Burke, thanks for joining me. So for our workout today, um, you can do these movements seated or standing. So I'm gonna demonstrate some of these, um, a good portion of these movements seated. Good morning, Trudy. Um, and if you want to use weights um, or a resistance band or your makeshift weights, those will work great. Hey, Diane. Hey, Liz, glad y'all are tuning in. You'll wanna have some water nearby. Um, so we'll get started in just a second. Hey everyone, so glad you're tuning in and joining me. Um, of course, you can do this later on as well if you're um, not joining me live, that's okay. So I think you guys can see me, or excuse me, hear me okay. So we're going to do a little warm up to get started, seated or standing. So I'm going to demonstrate um, both. So just with a little march in place, you want to bend the arms, roll the shoulders back, lift up the chest. So march in place, option to do it standing. And if you are standing, you just want to have the chair or the counter nearby to help with your balance. And then we're going to take the feet out wider. So a wide march. And then bring it back in to a narrow march. Shoulders roll back, keeping the chest lifted. So the crown of your head is lifted, the breastbone is lifted. And we're gonna alternate a heel tap in front. So alternate a heel tap. Again, seated is fine. A little moving stretch. And we're gonna take it to a half of a jumping jack. So a half jack, tap, out to the side and reach the arm up for a little bit more both arms reach or you could take it to a full jack so even if you're seated the full jack works well Linda Burke does this one well so you choose let's do four more four three two and one and we're gonna reach forward. One hand reaches forward to the same side leg. So if you're standing, dig the heel in and alternate that reach forward. So arm extends, leg extends. Nice full breath. Let's do one more for each side and then come all the way up. Seated or standing, you're gonna lift up one foot and circle it around. So let's take a few big rotations with the ankle, both directions. And then switch to your other leg. So when we think about balance, the um, surface that we're standing on makes a big difference. So if you're standing on thick carpet that's gonna be more challenging for your balance versus standing on a flat uh, hardwood floor or tile. And then release it. Alternate a toe tap, extending back. So hands can rest on the hips, so if you have a counter nearby, extend back, tap the toes. And the next time you extend back your right leg, just hold it back there. So even though we are tipped forward, can we keep the shoulders down? Can we zip up strong through the belly muscles? Now lift the back leg. If you're feeling wobbly, just tap the toes down to the floor. Hey there, Eddie, thanks for tuning in. So we're just doing our warm up. Um, so you wanna have something nearby just in case you wanna steady yourself. You're gonna lift the leg, lower down. Let's do a few more lift and lower. So a nice extension for the hip really focusing to the muscles and the lower back and the gluteals. Two more. Last one. March it out. 
and let's switch to the other side. So I'm going to take my left foot back, toes are going to tap down, just hold it there. Check your standing leg is unlocked at the knee. We're going to lift up the back foot, the left foot, and balance. Wherever you need your arms to help with your balance is fine. We're going to tap the toes down and lift. Lower and lift. So, to make some of these movements more challenging, and maybe you've been doing this um, all along, you have um, the option to secure weights around the ankles. So I think some of you have uh, the Velcro or the cuffed weights you can move around the ankles or around the wrists, but that would be one way to up the uh, challenge for these movements. Two more, and last one. Good, march it out. Shoulders roll back, and let's do a standing or seated bicycle. So elbow turns and taps to the opposite knee. So it's a turn and tap, seated, works great. Really important, we're pulling the belly muscles in. The next time you turn, we're going to hold it there. So if you're standing, this is going to be more challenging for your balance. If you're seated, still a good challenge, but we want to pull in real strong through the uh, belly button and switch. Other side. And release it. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. And let's lift and lower the heels. An imaginary jump rope backwards. So heels lift and lower, imaginary jump rope backwards. If you're standing, you can still do that heel lift. All right, let's take the jump rope forward and lift up all 10 toes. Lift up all 10 toes. Jump rope forward and lift the toes. And let's go back to the jumping jack. So that could be a half jack, seated or standing, full jack, seated or standing. Keep going. Hey there, Andy. Thanks for joining us. Let's do four more jumping jacks. Three, two, and one. All right. Take the arms and just kind of figure eight them. So the arms circle one way and then reverse the di uh, direction. So switch to the other way. And then we'll take some back stroking arms. So seated or standing, back stroking arms. See if you can lift the shoulder up out of the rib cage. See if you can lift the ribs up out of the hips. And then let's bend the arms, rest your fingertips onto your shoulders for egg beater circles. So your elbows are going to circle outside the body and then reverse it. All right, shake it out, roll it out, grab a sip of water if you need it. So we're going to continue our workout with a high knee lift and the arms are going to pull down. Lift with the knee, pull down with the arms. So seated works great or standing. The next time you lift up your right knee, just hold it there. Even if you're seated, keep your right foot lifted. We're going to open the arms out to the side, extend the right leg, bend the right leg and bring the hands back in. So you're going to extend the right leg, open up the arms, and bring it in. There's three. Keep breathing. Two. And last one. All right, set it down. March it out. We're going to take the arms up, pull the hands down, lift up the left knee, and hold it there. So I'm going to demonstrate this one uh, seated. Let's do five. Extend the left leg, arms are going to open. Bend the left leg, arms come in. Two, three, four, and five. Nice job. Shoulders roll up, back, and down. We're going to do our sit to stand. So go ahead and take a seat, unless you want to do these as an air squat. 
you choose the width of your feet and you choose where your hands are. So you can use the hands if you need to. So we'll start with our basic sit to stand. Option to add the arms reaching up overhead. Our next option, we're going to keep the arms lifted as you sit and stand. So arms are going to stay extended in overhead squat. Let's do two more. And last one. Nice. Coming all the way up. Standing. Let's do a wide stance. Hands can rest to the hips. And we're going to do a curl back. So when you curl back, you want your foot flexed. And you want to bring the heel up as if it were going to touch your tail. Again, if you have Velcro uh, cuff weights, you can put those around the ankles. That's a great way to up the challenge and work more on your leg strength. We're going to bring up one heel and just hold it up. So I have my right heel up towards my tail. Just hold it there. Imagine, again, the heel, we're going to touch the tail. Something nearby to steady yourself if you need it. Zip up the belly muscles, release and switch. So bring the other heel up as close to the tail as you can. Standing leg is doing a lot of work for us. Of course, the bent leg will feel a lot of strength uh, and tightening in the back of the leg, the hamstring. And release. Good. March it out. Shake it out. Roll the shoulders. Nice full breath. All right, next we're going to go to some push-ups. So the wall works great for a standing version of the push-up. So with your arms extended, you're going to press into the wall. Otherwise, you can come to the couch or the edge of a counter or a sturdy chair. But let's go for 10 push-ups or wall presses. So 10, 9, Eight, you could do these on your knees. Seven, six, five, shoulders down, four, three, two, and one. Nice job. Take a moment, loosen up the wrists, roll out the shoulders. <clears throat> and then let the arms crisscross. So one on top open and then switch top arm with bottom arm. All right, so we're going to go to um, an option to use weights, so dumbbells, cuff weights, your makeshift weights. These are the uh, water bottles I filled up with sand, so whatever you have handy. And this can be done seated or standing. You want to hinge forward, keeping your back flat, and you're going to pull the weights or your hands Toward your hips. So the movement, even if you're not using weights, you want to pull back, squeeze the elbows together, and extend the arms, but not going so far forward that you round the back. So keep going. Again, standing option is fine. For more challenge to your balance, you could lift up one heel or lift up one foot, even if you're seated. Nice squeeze when you pull back. So strengthening the muscles in the upper back between the shoulder blades. Let's do two more. Last one and release it. All right, our next movement, I'll demonstrate it seated first, is an overhead press. So bringing the weights to your shoulders, extend overhead and come back down. Extend and bend. Option to lift up the other heel if you had your last uh, movement with the foot lifted or lift up the foot entirely. So if you want to do this standing, lift the heel or the foot and extend. Modification, keep both feet down. You could also alternate one and then the other. Important on this one, even though we're extending the arms overhead, the shoulders stay down. So resist the urge to hunch the shoulders up to your ears. 
Let's do two more. And last one. All right, go ahead and set down your weights. Sweep the arms side to side. All right, looks like we're still coming through okay. Where is my water? Here it is. So just keep the body moving, even if that's just a seated march or a standing march. Big shoulder rolls up, back, and down. All right, this next movement, we're going to start in a standing position um, with the couch or the chair that you're using a couple of feet out in front of you. Separate the feet hip to shoulder width distance, and while your legs are pretty straight, there's a slight bend at the knee. You're going to hinge forward, reach one hand towards the chair, and then come up tall. Hinge forward, reach the other hand toward the chair, and come up tall. Now, if you need to bend the legs a little bit more because you're feeling this really pull in your back, that's fine. Bend the legs as much as you need to. Our next option is to hinge forward with both hands reaching. Now, with both arms, we're lengthening the lever. It does put more challenge into the body. Our next option would be to lift up one foot as we reach forward and then come tall and then reach the other arm and opposite leg or you could do same side. So these are all options for us practicing our hinge. So pushing the hips back, reaching the arms forward, modification, maybe just keep the hand resting onto the hips. Let's do four more, three, nice squeeze in the back side of the body, two, and one. All right, roll it out, shake out the legs. Let's do a little stretch for the hamstring. We did this earlier in the warm-up. You're going to dig one heel in and reach forward. Seated, same movement. Dig one heel into the floor, hinge forward, and extend the arm. Even if you don't touch the toes, don't worry about it. Last one, good, and then coming up. So our next movement, we're going to do a calf raise or a heel raise to strengthen the calves. So if you want to do it seated, you're going to lift up both heels and lower. Lift and lower. If you have weights nearby and you want to rest those just above your knees, that's going to give you a little bit more resistance. Another option would be to come up to standing, ankles under knees, lift both heels and lower. You could also bring the weights up to your shoulders. So when we have the weights up on the shoulders, we're actually helping to load the bones um, to make them stronger for bone density benefits. So when we lift up the heels, we are challenging the balance. Anytime we pick up part of the foot off the floor, challenges the balance. Now this next one, we're going to lift the heels and stay lifted. So even if you're seated, see if you can stay lifted up on your tiptoes. And our last little option would be for the eyes to close. So even if you're seated, see if you can stay lifted with your heels up and maybe challenge yourself and close the eyes and release it. All right. Step those down, roll the shoulders up, back, and down. Let's do a little stretch for those calf muscles. So you're going to step one foot forward, the other foot back, and you want to push the back heel down to the floor. Take a peek at your back toes and see if you can get them pointed uh, the same direction as your front toes. Shoulders roll back, hands can rest to your hips as you bend the front leg a little bit more. and then let's switch. So step the other foot back. You want to drive the heel down to the floor. Shoulders roll back. Just this stretch for the calf is a good challenge for the balance. So shoulders down, lift up through the breastbone. Take a peek at your back foot and see, can you get your toes going straight ahead?
and release it. Okay, so let's come back to an upper body movement. All right, I'm glad y'all are still with me. So we're gonna do this next movement to strengthen the front of the arm, the bicep, and you can do this one uh, seated or standing. I know I say that a lot, but I wanna make sure uh, y'all know you always have that option. So we're gonna sit and we're gonna hold the weight in one hand, tuck the elbow into your side body. You're gonna curl and then extend. Now as you curl, notice your wrist. You want the wrist to be flat as opposed to rounded forward or backward. Our next option, pull the belly muscles in, lift up one foot. I'm gonna lift up the foot that's the same side as the arm that's doing the curl. So if you're standing, same thing, elbow tucks, and you're just doing this standing on one foot. Good. The next option would be to keep the leg lifted, but now extend the leg as you bend the arm. Shoulders pulling down, back, and together. Let's do two more. And last one. All right, and release it. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. And let's take it to the other side. So, option to sit, with really good posture, tuck the elbow, and begin to curl. Our next option would be to lift up the heel or the foot. Again, I'm gonna use the same side as the curling arm. And the next option would be to extend and bend the leg. So if you're standing, it's gonna be more challenging onto your, hang on, let me get this down, on your balance. And it's also a good challenge for the brain. So coordination of upper and lower body. Make sure that wrist is flat so the hand that's holding the weight or even if you're not using a weight, just practice that movement. Three more, two, and one. All right, go ahead and set it down, shake it out, roll it out, grab a sip of water anytime you need to. And we're gonna do, um, a movement we did earlier, so the sit to stand, um, but this time we're gonna have the option to lift up a heel or even a foot. So option one, seated, you're just gonna stand all the way up and sit. You choose your foot position, so if you know it's better for your knees to have the feet wide or the feet narrow, that's fine. Option to use the hands to help you stand and sit. Our next option is going to be lifting up one heel stand, keep the heel lifted, and sit. And then switch, lift up the other heel, stand, keep the heel lifted, and sit. Okay. Our third option would be to lift the heel as you stand, and then lift the foot as you sit, and switch. So the other foot, we're gonna lift the heel, stand. Option to lift the entire foot and sit and continue. Our next option, I know I've got a lot of options. You're gonna lift the foot entirely as you stand, keep the foot lifted as you sit and switch to the other side. So we're gonna lift the foot up entirely. This is an option. Stand, keep the foot lifted and sit. Okay, let's do four more. All those options, you choose the one that's best for you. I'm gonna See if I can keep my foot lifted as I stand and lifted as I sit. Two more. And the last one. All right, nice, nice job. From here, option to come to a standing position and rest the foot onto the chair or the couch. You could reach back and take hold or you could just extend the leg back. So if you're sitting on the chair, move your hips over to one side. So we're stretching the hip flexors 
and the quadriceps, the muscles in the front of the hip and front of the thigh. Release and switch to the other side. So option to rest the foot onto the chair or couch. You could reach back and take hold. That's gonna be another um, level or layer of balance challenge. Or push your hips to the other side and extend the leg back. So these are all just variations or modifications for us to stretch the hip and the quadricep. See if you can pull the shoulders back. Resist the urge to round forward. And release it. Okay, let your legs just kind of shift side to side. If you are standing, you could take your feet wide, push your hips side to side, maybe even some circles with the hips. If you're choosing that option, make sure you get both directions going. All right, so I'm gonna go back to um, the weights. I'm just gonna use one weight in my right hand. So um, this one I think works best standing, but to help have something nearby to steady yourself. I'm gonna stand on my left foot, and with my right toes pointed forward, I'm gonna take the right leg out to the side. Our next option would be to rest the right hand, whether you're holding the weight or not, to the outer part of the right thigh. So a standing hip abduction. Modification, if standing is just not a good option, would be to lift, open the leg, and close the leg. So a seated lift and close. Otherwise, keep going. Notice the right toes are going straight ahead. See if you can um, keep them facing forward. Resist the urge for the right toes to turn out to the side. Now the next time you lift the right leg, just hold it out there. Even if you're not using a weight, just hold the leg out there. Roll the shoulders back. And release it. So march it out. And let's switch to the other side. So, if seated is best for you, sit with good posture. You're going to lift, open the left leg, lift, close the left leg, open and close. Really want to pull in through the abdominals. If you're standing, option to have the wall nearby. You're going to take your left leg out to the side and bring it in, or whichever leg you haven't done yet. Option to rest your hand, whether you have a weight in it or not, to the outer part of the thigh. Your standing leg is strong, it's sturdy, it's straight, but the knee is unlocked. So you want to make sure you've got a micro bend in the knee. So the left leg is moving, and it's certainly working, but our standing right leg doing a lot of work as well. So balance and strength together. The next time you take your leg out to the side, hold it there. Lift the chest, zip up the belly muscles from cubic bone to breastbone so you're strong uh, in your center. And release. March it out. Shake it out. Nice, nice job. Okay. So our next movement, I'm going to demonstrate it seated first. Um, of course, you could do this standing. Is the extension with the tricep or the back of the arm. So this movement, you're going to hinge forward, and you're going to bring your hands up towards your shoulders, and you're going to extend the arms back, both arms back, and bend. So extend and bend. Option to do this with weights, extend and bend. Modification would be to alternate one at a time, or to come up to standing. So same rules apply as far as your posture. You're hinged forward, but you want to keep the chest lifted. So it's an extension for the arms. Really squeeze the back of the upper arm as you straighten the arm. For more challenge, shift the weight to one foot, lift up the other heel or lift up the foot entirely. So again, our focus today, balance and strength. Keep going, see if you can switch to your other foot. So lift up the heel 
or lift up the foot entirely. Squeeze the tricep, the back of the upper arm. Check your posture. You want your head and neck in a nice neutral position with the rest of the spine. Three, two, and one. All right. Set it down, or excuse me, set the weights down, roll out the shoulders. This next movement um, can be done standing against the wall or a counter or with your hands in a seat, um, or you could come down to all fours. So you want to um, pull the shoulders down and back. We're going to take one leg behind us and lift it up. See if you can flex the foot, and you're going to push the heel up to the sky. So if you want to do this on the floor, you start in your all fours position, and you're going to push the heel up to the sky. Check in with your posture. We want to keep the shoulders out of the earlobes. Now the next time you push the heel up, just hold it there. Check your posture. Carefully, you're not holding your breath. Can you lift the heel up a little higher? And then close your eyes, even for a quick second, and release it. Okay. Shake it out. March it out again. If you are wearing those puffed uh, weights around the ankles, that's going to up your intensity. So standing or kneeling, you choose. You're going to take your other leg, whichever one you haven't done yet, and push the heel up to the sky. Keep going. You want to keep the shoulders down and your arms, while they're um, supporting some of the body weight, see if you can spread the fingers wide and see if you can unlock the elbow. The next time you push the heel up, hold it up. See if you can keep the foot flexed and then close the eyes and release it. Nice, nice job. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. Okay, so this next movement, we're going to put a couple of moves together that we've already done. So I'm going to demonstrate it first seated. You're going to curl the weights up to your shoulders, shift forward, stand, press the weights overhead, come back down, sit, and extend. So it's a curl, stand, overhead press and basically just reversing that movement. If you want to do this without a chair, so you're going to extend up overhead and come back down. So kind of an imaginary chair, curl, stand, press, and come back down. For a little bit more challenge to your balance, lift up one heel and then lift up the other heel or lift up one foot and then the other foot. Keep breathing. We're going to do three more, two more, and last one. All right. Set the weights down. Take a seat. We're going to take our feet wide, roll the shoulders back, let one arm hang between the legs, and circle. If you wanted to hold a weight in the hand and circle, that's going to give us a little bit more of a pull. This is a nice way to uh, stretch the muscles around the shoulder. Reverse the direction when you're ready. So the weight gives us a little bit of a pull, almost like traction for the muscles around the shoulder and then switch. So the feet are wide, whether you have a weight in your hand or not, that's up to you. Little circles. And then whenever you're ready, reverse the direction the other way. And release it. So we're going to roll the shoulders back, bring the legs together and walk the feet out in front. We're going to dig the heels in and you're going to lean back extend one leg and set the heel down, extend the other leg and set the heel down. Our next option would be to extend an arm. Now this might be the same side or the opposite side. 
So the further back you lean, the more challenge you're going to feel to your core body and your balance. The next time you extend, just hold it there. And again, it might be the opposite limb or it might be the same slide, totally up to you. Flex the foot, see if you can hinge back maybe a quarter inch and switch. Other set, hold it there, shoulders down and back, lift up through the breastbone and release it. Nice, nice job. Okay, we're going to take a weight or two weights if you want. You're going to hinge back and you're going to turn and bring the weight just outside the body. Now, if you want, you can put more bend to the arms. If you rather do this seated on the floor, that's fine. Three more, and then we're gonna change up this movement a little bit. Two more, and last one. All right, we're gonna to come to the center. One hand is gonna hold the weight, stay center. The other arm is gonna reach back, come to the center, switch hands, reach back and switch. So we're opening up, turning back and lift. Modification, you don't have to hold a weight in the hand. The next time you open it up, just hold it there. See if your head, your eyes can turn and look to that back hand. So functional mobility, turning the head, come back to the center and switch, open it up, turn your head and your eyes to the back hand. And bring it to the center. Nice job, go ahead and set the weight down, roll out the shoulders. And we're gonna take one arm across the chest, use the other hand to gently pull in. If you'd rather do this standing, that is fine. You wanna stand with good posture, knees are unlocked. Check that your shoulders are coming down out of the ears. Nice full breath and switch. Arms are going to open wide. Cross. Use the other hand to gently pull in. So stretching the muscles of the upper body around the shoulder, the back, keeping the shoulders out of the ears. And release. Shake it out. Let's cross one ankle over the other ankle or over the opposite knee. So you choose. Um, you want to make sure your crossed leg that the foot is flexed. Lift the chest, hinge forward. When you feel pull in that outer hip socket, just hold it there. And slowly come up, release and switch. So option to cross low or option to cross up a little higher. You want to flex the foot Keep the shoulders back as you hinge forward. So resist the urge just to round and kind of collapse forward. We miss out on the benefit of the stretch for the outer hip, the gluteal muscles, uh, the piriformis, those muscles that house uh, the nerves that run throughout the body, especially the uh, sciatic nerve. And release it, uncross the leg. Shift the weight of the leg side to side. And let's bring it to the center. Extend one leg, hinge forward. If you want a little bit more stretch and more challenge to your balance, option to do that standing, or option to prop the foot up to a sturdy chair or the edge of the couch and hinge forward. So these are all just variations that we can do to lengthen the back of the extended legs, specifically the hamstring, the muscles behind the knee down into the lower leg, and then come up and switch. So seated option, extend the leg, heel down, hinge forward, keep the shoulders back. Standing option, uh, just using the floor, or see if you want a little bit more stretch, more challenge to your balance, and prop the foot up on a sturdy chair, and hinge forward, noticing the difference in one leg versus the other. So it's not um, uncommon to have a difference in the flexibility of one side versus the other. And then coming all the way up, march it out, roll it out. We're gonna take a big sweep up overhead. See if you can lift up through the chin, lift up 
through the eyes, then turn your palms away from one another, pull down the side walls, big shoulder roll. We're going to do that two more times. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, pull the walls down. Last one, roll the shoulders. Inhale, lift. Exhale, pull down the side walls. Nice, nice job. Give yourself a hand. Great job. Thanks for joining me. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Um, and I, let's see, yoga at one o'clock with Sarah. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.